Hey everyone, and welcome back to the channel. Today, I'm very excited to have Dr. Panos Karazoudis to talk about his experience matching into neurosurgery at the Mayo Clinic. Welcome, Dr. Panos, to the channel. Okay, thank you very much for the invite. I'm very excited to be with you guys today and uh, share my experience with you. Perfect. I would like to ask you about your medical school experience and how that shaped your, uh, your passion towards coming to the States and how important is it to focus on med school uh, scores, ranking for the residency, uh, USMLE residency journey? Yeah, 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 absolutely. So um, as uh, Malti said, my name is Panos Kyrazoudis. Um, I'm from Athens, Greece, and I grew up there. I did my med school there. Um, I actually graduated in 2015, um, and then I moved to the United States. Um, in regards to uh, the medical school experience and the impact that the medical school has on uh, ultimately, you know, applying for, for residency and especially surgical residency in the United States and ultimately the chances of uh, finding a spot. Um, I think what matters the most, you know, when it comes to international applicants, of course, the, uh, the medical programs and the program directors have some schools that are more known, especially, for example, from the UK uh, or from France or, you know, from Australia, perhaps, or from Canada. You know, these applicants kind of tend to stand out a little bit more uh, than, you know, other countries. Um, what matters more, as it says, also the name of the school uh, for example, some schools like in India or Pakistan that have a very, you know, kind of world-renowned name. But ultimately, I think, you know, it doesn't matter so much where you're from, um, as long as you demonstrate in your CV and, uh, you know, in your, um, in your, you know, cover letter that you were a medical student that kind of stood out in your class. And that's why they look a lot into your comparative um, ranking with the other medical students. Um, in your class and um, ultimately kind of what unique story uh, you have, um, you know, throughout med school. Awesome. And definitely the USMLE exams and scores, I know the step one is going to change to pass fail soon, but for those who are taking step one scored and the step two CK is going to be also scored, how important is that for the residency application, especially for the competitive specialties like neurosurgery? Yeah, yeah. Uh, things are definitely going to be different. Um, if you if you ask me, you know, step one scores um, while they're still, you know, being um, 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 revealed to the programs, the actual scores, um, they tend to weigh a lot. To weigh a lot actually during the interview, um, during the applicant selection process before you invite an applicant for an interview. And ultimately they do matter sometimes even for the ranking, although obviously it's not the, mo the single most important factor, but definitely they matter a lot. Um, when a step two CK score is available, that is also being you know, disseminated among the, um, you know, the, the pool of the um, interview, uh, interviewers. And I gotta say, I, I, I'm in a program, I'm a third year currently neurosurgical resident at the Mayo Clinic. And we're very lucky to actually, although we, our role is not as you know, critical as you know, the consultants or the fifth year usually residents, um, where they play a very more vital role into the applicant selection process, but we do, you know, have also a saying and we participate ultimately into the ranking process. And so what I can tell you is that also step two CK scores tend to matter as well, um, especially if the step two CK score uh, is close or different, especially if it's higher, um, especially for those applicants that did not score very well on step one. And so I think, as you said, once we move into the pass fail score, which at least in the, you know, my understanding is that a lot of people have been, um, you know, against um, this uh, decision, especially for the competitive specialties, because as you said, it's gonna move the way into um, other um, components of the applicant's process. Um, but I think step two CK is gonna, is gonna take over step one's um, role. Ultimately, Ultimately, whether it's, you know, whether it's step one or step two or another, uh, you know, board examination, ultimately people and programs are going to need a score, something that's going to tell in an objective manner how you stand compared to any applicant. That's a great point. And when uh, I want to talk about your experience specifically in the steps when uh, you were studying for this exam, did you have a score in mind? And now 
being part of this selection, uh, you have more experience with uh, with what programs are looking for. Do you think that there is a specific cutoff for the step one or step two for people to be considered or highly considered? Yeah, that's a very good question. And, um, you know, I always, you know, when I speak with medical students and especially with international medical students, um, I get that question a lot. Um, in my mind, and I think, you know, most people would agree with me, you know, uh, that have been through this process. Um, step one is a, essentially something that it's not necessarily guaranteed it's going to open doors for you, but at least it's going to make sure that doors won't close. And what I mean, and what I mean by that essentially is that um, you're striving to get a good score and obviously a great score, for example, I don't know, in the 260s or 270s is, you know, is, is going to, you know, definitely stand out. Um, nonetheless, I think what you need is make sure that you get that score that is sometimes different for each program, but especially for neurosurgery. A lot of programs have a cutoff, um, a, you know, below which they're not going to um, extend an interview. Um, unless, you know, there are some uh, unique um, exceptions. And so I think for neurosurgery programs, um, a lot of scores have like about, you know, 230 or maybe even 240. Um, for example, um, you know, in the very, you know, Ivy League schools. Um, and so I think for a neurosurgery, I think you, you're striving your, your bottom, you know, your threshold should be at least, you know, I think like a 240. Um, as I said, again, to ensure that you can continue on, um, you know, dreaming on pursuing this dream in the United States. Is it possible even if you get a lower score? Yes, it's just your, the, the decisions that you're going to have to make and uh, the pathway that you're going to have to take um, can be a lot harder. Um, there is a, a website, I don't know if it's still valid, to be honest with you, not a lot of applicants are aware of it. It's part of the, um, uh, the AAMC, the American Association of Medical Colleges, that has also a website. It's called FRIDA, um, F-R-E-I-D-A, and we can perhaps share with uh, the applicants um, on, the, on the video uh, description below, but um, it's essentially FRIDA online, it's essentially like a, a website that has a very detailed description of the uh, for each program um, about the scores, the minimum scores, you know, percentage of internationals in the program throughout the story of the program, um, and other some useful information that at least you know somebody can keep in mind as you you know embarking into this you know journey. That's great, and I can, as you mentioned, put the link in the description below. Uh, yeah. So you're saying that if you get extremely high scores, that makes you stand out, but if you if you want to and make sure that you will not be excluded from an invitation to interview. At least you should get around to 40. I know it varies between the programs and uh, between specialties, but you know to have around 240 in order not to be excluded from from yeah. invitation. And even if you get lower scores, you still might have a chance. But it's going to be harder, and you have to take different decisions to get there. Correct. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, my personal advice is, and you know, I work in a lab. Um, you know, in Dr. Biden's lab at the Mayo Clinic uh, in the neurosurgery department, where um, I, I served as a research fellow. I worked as a research fellow uh, for three years. Um, and um, I also did a master's in uh, clinical and translational science while there. And, you know, anything that I could do essentially to boost my CV, um, especially around research. And we're going to, you know, talk about more about this later. But um, we had a lot of other people that are, you know, research fellows from other countries like India or Pakistan or Turkey um, or, you know, Syria, you know, from, you know, all over the world, essentially. And, um, you know, we tend to, you know, all these individuals are highly competent and, you know, a lot of them are applying now. Um, and I, of course, wish them good luck. Um, but, you know, not everybody has, you know, a, a perfect score, um, has a great score. And I always tell people um, never, you know, if that's you really your dream and you're really, you know, persistent and you have perseverance to, to pursue it till the very end. I never tell people, you know, because that's something that people are going to hear a lot during the journey, um, even before they take step one, uh, which is, you know, you know, something like neurosurgery or other competitive specialties. Um, you know, don't even think about it in the United States. Um, and I'm sure that's a theme that a lot of people are familiar with um, in your, um, you know, in, in, in your channel. Um, but I would never tell anybody to stop pursuing the dreams just before 
um, just before, just because they had a low score. But they should be prepared for it, that they're going to hear this thing. Awesome. Uh, I want to ask you, when did you start preparing for your steps? Are there specific materials that you think were extremely helpful in, in your preparation for step one and step two? Yeah, I was uh, very lucky um, actually during medical school um, to find out about the steps and about the pathway to a medical residency in the United States quite early. So as most European schools, my school is um, a six year program. Um, and I you know, essentially started studying. Um, it's, I need, my curriculum is based in Greek, okay? So I started you know, studying in English and uh, the English kind of books essentially um, from about the second year of medical school. Um, and I was um, uh, lucky enough to be in a school where quite a few of our um, medical graduates would go to another country, including the States. Um, to pursue uh, residency there. And so it really matters which school you're from and whether your school has medical graduates that can essentially serve as your mentors during medical school to kind of help you um, get familiar with the process um, and give you some you know, insight tips. Um, but also I think the critical point was that I started early. So I think the earlier you decide it's better for your, uh, you know, program for your schedule and for your kind of organizing the studying around it and the series of events that need to happen and we're gonna you know more talk more about this but also I think what matters is that you study you know essentially my theme was try to study all the basic sciences in English as soon as possible um, just so I can take the step one um, I took it during the fourth year of medical school. So by the end of essentially the preclinical year, so at the end of the basic sciences, I took step one. And I think that's very important because you don't want to take probably step one after you're done with med school. It's going to be really hard going back into the basic sciences. It's possible, but I think it's going to make your life harder. Yeah, I definitely agree with that. And step two, did you study also? Did you finish that before med school or during your after, after school? Yeah, yeah. So after I was done with step one, I took a, you know, a little bit of a, just a little bit of a break, but I also started, you know, studying essentially for step two. And I took step two at the end of the six year, essentially at the end of the medical school, um, I took also step two. And I think that helped me one, getting familiar with the step, um, you know, one board examination process to get used to a very long and, you know, admittedly, I think hard exam in general, something that we're not used to, to the rest, you know, in the rest of the world. Um, and third, um, essentially building all that foundation so that step two is, um, I think it's easier. Um, I've had some friends that took step two before step one. I think it's feasible. And a lot of people that actually took uh, the steps after they graduated from school just because they, you know, decision to go to the United States, you know, came kind of late um, at the end of med school. And I think it's feasible to take step two before step one, but I think it's even harder to go to step one afterwards. Yeah, I totally agree with you. There yeah. are, this is the good thing that there are different pathways. There are successful people who did yeah. step one or step two first, yeah. but uh, building the basis with step one and then uh, using step two as a more clinical uh, focused exam is uh, I think is a better way. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Thank you so much, Dr. Panos for this information. In the next episode, we'll talk about Dr. Panos research experience, clinical rotations and the match process. Make sure to subscribe so you don't miss the next episodes related to Dr. Panos' experience and future episodes related to residency, the match process, and research. If you find any value in this video, hit the like button and tell at least one colleague about it. This will help support the channel and help me continue doing videos like this to help you during your residency journey. If you have any questions, you can leave them in the comments below. Feel free to reach out to me on Instagram at Malki Asad or my Facebook page, Malki Asad MD. Thank you all so much for watching and see you in future videos.